<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Unleashed. All right, guys, today we are going to start working on a little bit of applied energistic stuff. And as you can see, I already got some stuff made. Uh, like I said last episode, I'm just going to build some of this stuff, do it off camera, and just get a basic AE system going on. Okay, so what I got here is we made the ME controller last episode, then I made an ME access terminal. From here, we can see all of the different stuff that's in the ME network. I've taken everything from all of my chests and just dumped it in here. So yeah, we got a lot of just random stuff going on in here. Uh, I made an ME drive. This guy can hold multiple ME disks. And I made five 4K storage units, and <laughs> they're pretty much full. Uh, they can only hold 63 types per disk. And this one's got 62 out of 63. This one's full of different types. And they don't hold very much storage either. Uh, so this was just the basic, you know, get us going. Get rid of all of our chests, put everything into the ME system. And yeah, we're pretty much good to go there. Uh, we are going to need to make more storage disks. Uh, especially if we're going to start quarrying, we want to be able to just dump everything from the quarry into the ME system and not worry about things overflowing, running out of space, etc. And then over here I have a wireless access point, and this is how you can access the ME network from pretty much anywhere wirelessly. I have an ME wireless access terminal here, so I can just click on here wherever I am and have access to my stuff. Now this only works about 32 blocks away from the ME wireless access point. Uh, so by default I believe this thing is only 16 blocks distance and then you can put in 16 of these wireless boosters which gives you 16 additional blocks away from the access point that this thing will work. So yeah, we're pretty good here. This should work all the way down to the smeltery level. So yeah, um, so I made the ME assembler and this guy required a bunch of crafting. You have to build the edges, the yeah, all all the edges with this ME assembler containment wall. Uh, the sides have to be this ME heat vent, and then inside you have to put in at least one pattern provider. I'm pretty sure, maybe it's one CPU. Uh, but anyway, we have one CPU and one pattern provider. So if I right click on here, we can see one of the pattern providers. We only have one page here. I can't go to a next one of one. So I have just this limited amount of space to fill up with different things that we can auto craft. Now this is all I wanted to get going for right now. Uh, what I want to do is auto craft, you know, a bunch more of this stuff so I don't, well, all the stuff needed to make the assembler because I don't want to have to build that stuff by hand. Uh, I want to have maybe 10 pages worth and probably 10 CPUs and all the different walls and heat vents and everything to go together for that. Uh, I don't know where we're gonna put this thing. If I make it, you know, with those 10 items inside, or I guess 20, 10 of each, uh, it's gonna be pretty big and pretty much the whole inside of my tree is going to be this uh, assembler. So yeah, it's probably gonna be out to here or something. I don't know if I really want the floors and the ceiling to be that guy. <laughs> it's already poking through on two sides. Uh, well, at least down here is pretty good. We have our pattern encoder. This is where we can make the patterns, set it in code, and then stick it right in here uh, for the auto crafting. So, yeah, that's pretty good, pretty good. I haven't started making any of the patterns. Uh, I want to start doing that, make a whole bunch of this stuff, and then we're going to have to figure out a place where we're going to put this guy. And also the ME system that I have here, I don't know if I'm actually going to keep it here or not. Uh, we can run wire somewhere and then, you know, have this guy be remote, but we're going to want this in a location that's easy for us to access to put in more patterns and all of that stuff. Okay, so also, uh, oh yeah, I have a crafting terminal right here so we can pull things out, do some crafting, just easy access for that. Uh, so also, I started digging a tunnel over towards the farms our skeleton and our blaze farms. So yep, that's pretty good. It was a pretty easy tunnel to do, just a three by three tunnel. Uh, just, you know, start doing some things with the walls. I was trying to figure out a way to transition the stone brick. Or Well, this is all stone here. I figure we'll make the walls out of stone brick in here since this is a smeltery, I don't know. Uh, but I was trying to figure out how to transition the stone brick into these redwood planks. So I just 
you know, went three blocks and then kind of stair stepped it after three. So I think that works pretty good. And then you got some stone brick stairs, upside down stairs over here. Yeah, I think we are doing pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so another thing I want to do is I want to get the ME network. I want to run cables over here and hook these guys up into the ME system. Uh, so for this, I think we're going to just leave the deep storage units here. We don't really need to take them anywhere. But we're going to want to put some storage storage buses. That's the word. Put some storage buses on these guys so the ME network can access all this stuff. But, you know, the bones and the arrows and all that stuff can go ahead and stay in these barrels or, I guess, these deep storage units. We don't need to import them onto our disks. We just want our ME network to be like, oh, hey, I can access this stuff and then do things with them. Uh, eventually, like I said, I want to get these bones to be automatically processed and put down here into these bioreactors automatically. So let's get started working on that. Uh, one thing that I do have to do to before we can get anything done is I got to make some of the ME cabling, run the wires all the way over here, and then we can hook up the storage buses and work with all that stuff. So let me get to crafting some of those recipes. Well, actually, I think what I'll do first, before we start crafting, uh, let's come up here. I am going to make a pattern for something. Show you guys how this is done. It's actually kind of cool. It's been updated. Uh, so let's come over here. I think I made one pattern. Yeah, I made one blank pattern. Ooh, this is actually a good recipe to do. Uh, so if we come over here, you put your blank patterns here. And then let's look up blank pattern. Okay, so there it is. Now, before you couldn't shift click this thing, it wouldn't do anything, but you can shift click this now. It auto populates this full of just ghost items, and then you can say encode. Now, this pattern will be able to create more patterns. That's probably the first thing you want to create when you uh, are start starting to auto craft in applied energistics. So, let's do this pattern. So, now we can see we can craft this. Let's craft up 10 more. Just say begin. Now, it should go through the network, get all the items, and just craft them up. It's kind of going slow. We only have one crafting CPU. Uh, but now we can stick those in here, find other recipes we want, shift click them in. Uh, one thing I want to do is ME cable. Let's do, I think it's this one is the default. Yeah, this is, this is the one we want. So, let's encode that. Okay, so that's what I want to make a bunch of so I can run the cables over to the farm. And we should be able to hook up our ME network over there. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to craft up a bunch more of these patterns, get things ready, and then we will be right back. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I made a bunch of patterns in the molecular assembler chamber. And, yeah, a lot of the applied energistics patterns here. More stuff than what we need for right now, but we'll get our use out of this stuff eventually. I got all of these different storage cell patterns all the way up to the storage cluster, which can be used to create the 64K storage drives. Now, there's a lot of stuff that goes into all of these things, and I don't know if I necessarily have all the resources right now to start busting out the 64K drives. I would actually like to get a quarry going and get a whole bunch of resources incoming before I start messing around with this stuff too much. Uh, so I got the cables run. And as we can see right here, this looks pretty ugly. Uh, this is, I, I didn't change this cable, but I didn't want to have an ME cable running all the way down like that. So underneath, can I get through here please? Underneath there, uh, I had to open up a little bit of a hole to the outside. And then I ran the ME cables down along the, I guess, the, the bark of the tree. And all the way down to our smelting floor. Okay, so yeah, that doesn't look very pretty either. Uh, we got this opening here, and it continues all the way down, uh, making more of these processors. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I kind of derped last episode. I kind of skipped over the fact that you can still make these processors the older way using the quartz cutting knife and all that. Uh, so, processor. It's the one where you smelt these guys up. You make the assembly... Yeah, I don't know why I just didn't see that when I was scrolling through these. It's this one right here. You get the assembly smelt into the processor with the quartz cutting knife, and you can build this stuff this way, and then you got to smelt it later. Um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, these lasers actually will come in handy to take care of this problem we're having right now. And yeah, this... Oops, whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Shift click on that thing. Yeah, this... The wire continues all the way down over here, uh, down here, and then I have it running all the way along underneath the floor here along the outside, 
down the middle of the floor two blocks down and then it comes out right here okay so we got our cable run all the way back here uh, that's getting close to what we want to do but like I was saying we have this ugliness that we need to take care of <laughs> I think those lasers are really gonna come in handy though to fix this problem okay so what I want to do let's come over here I want to make what's called a structure pipe uh, yeah these guys cobblestone structure pipes Let's go ahead and make, oh, I don't know, I guess seven is all we can make because I am out of cobblestone pipes. Let's make some more of these cobblestone pipes. Drop those in there. We'll do this. Okay, well, I'm not really sure how many of these we need. Let's do 15. Okay, so that's pretty good. So also, I think we're going to need bark. We're going to use some of this redwood bark. I think we only need 15 of those. And what we're going to end up doing is using those lasers down there to make facades okay so we put the structure pipe in there oh that makes pipe plugs I heard these things are work or uh, can be used with the build crap pipes to prevent the pipes from connecting so that's pretty cool so we do that in this aha so one of these recipes makes six of those so I guess I don't need 15 let's do maybe that many okay so let's just tell it to make that only okay so this is going to make facades Let's see. Oh, is it using three at a time? Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so it uses a little bit more of the structure pipes than it does the actual item. Aha. Uh -huh. Right, so what do we got? We got 18 of these facades. Great. So this is redwood root. Oh, it's not the bark. That's fine. Uh, we can just check out how this works, though. And those snap right onto the enemy cable, so you can't really tell they're there. Uh, but yeah, this is actually the wrong item. This will help on the outside of the tree though, because I want to change this cable. Oop, nighttime. I want to change this cable. Just creeper check. See, there's a creeper real close. I don't know where it's at. <laughs> but anyway, we'll be able to cover this up right like that, and you'll never even know that the ME cable is there. So I can run this cable all the way up the outside of the tree to where ME system is. And yeah, that way we don't have to see this cable coming down right like this. We can move this back one block and that'll be a lot nicer. All right, so let me sleep till day, get rid of these monsters, uh, make a few more of these facades, and we will continue on. Okay guys, so I got all of the facades set up. We come outside, we can take a look. Everything looks like it's the normal tree, but there are in fact ME cables running right along the outside here. Uh, and yeah, it looks very, very clean. Can't even tell there's anything there. I like it a lot. We come down here to like our little subfloor. And whoop, whoop, whoop. Come on, get me through here. Yeah, the cable still runs down here, but those facades do a very good job of just hiding it. They are a great addition. <laughs> so we can run our ME cable pretty much, you know, have it running along the baseboards or something like that. Have a little crafting station set up over here. I mean, just pretty much anything we'd want. So yeah, it's very, very awesome. I like those a lot. Uh, I'm probably going to change out this brick here for stone brick. So I put stone brick facades here. And then same thing, next floor down on our smelting level, or the smeltery level. I have the stone bricks down here because I'm probably going to change out these walls for stone brick as well. Okay, so I got pretty much everything all set up over here. I started moving things around. I got rid of our barrels because we're not going to use this pipe system anymore. Or at least, that's the plan. Uh, I moved all the deep storage units over here, including our barrel with our hearts. We might actually start looking at these pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, what I want to do is grab these ME storage buses. And we are going to place these guys right on here. Okay, so they all connect to each other. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I will need one more storage bus, actually, to get this guy hooked up. But that's fine. We don't need to worry about that just yet. Okay, so what we do need to do is get these connected here. We got our ME power, or our ME cable, right like that. Everything's connected. Everything's glowy, showing you everything is connected. Okay. So now we need to take out these items here. So this is going to have bones, so we need to set the little pattern, say this is going to be bones, and we always want our bones to go here. So we're going to go to this one, this tab right here, set the ME storage priority, and let's just bump this up to like, you know, something pretty high. We will never have another priority higher than that for bone storage. Okay, 
And then we can come over here and do the same thing with arrows. We want to do the same thing with uh, these minium shards. Yeah, we want all of these items just to have... <laughs> Alright, we want the priority for all these items to be high. So nothing else is going to override them. Our system will always put those items here. So let's set this one to 256. Okay. And then this one down here holds our blaze rods. So, oops, <laughs> on the ground with those. Let's go ahead and get that set up here as well. 256. Okay. So now we should be pretty much set. Now these barrels, I do want it to set for uh, in from the bottom. I changed that before, but now that we're using these storage buses, we're probably going to want them set up like that. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have to come back here and fix this barrel. Uh, but now we also have the cable running over here underneath our turtles. And I have made these basic import buses. Uh, these basic import buses are a little different than what they were before in Ultimate. Uh, these have been changed, so we can just go ahead and put these all right here. Uh, if we right-click on these guys... Oh, maybe we can't right-click on them. I thought we could. Maybe not these. Maybe it's just the export buses we can. So the basic import buses you can't right-click on. Uh, they only pull one item out at a time. They don't have stack mode. And you can't set a filter, so they just pull out whatever's in the inventory. So being that these turtles are killing these blaze... We're going to get the blaze rods and sometimes those little miniature red hearts. All of those items will be pulled out by these basic import buses and put down to the ME network. So we can just go ahead and connect this up. Nice. So all of... Whoop, oh, that's weird. I hear how that happens. Yeah, so all these turtles are now hooked into our ME network. Every time they kill the blaze, we should get the blaze rods into the system. And they will end up right here since this is the only spot available. And it has a high priority set for blaze rods. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, so another thing I want to do, let's get rid of this stuff. This is this was great, served its purpose, we don't need it anymore. And I was just void piping a lot of like the armor and bows and things like that. We don't need that stuff. Okay, so uh, we're going to do a new item here. This is brand new to the Applied Energistics. It wasn't in the previous version. And this is an ME transition pane. Let's see if I can place it right like that. Okay, so it's got this black face. And this face right here is where you want your items to go into. Anything that touches that face gets imported into the ME network. So we're going to have to do another one of these stone brick covers and another one of these conveyor belts. Pushing all the items directly onto these ME transition pane to that front face right there. Okay, so we're also going to have to run the ME cables. And I didn't quite get that all hooked up. But I think we'll just run the cables right along here and then down and over. And we can just use some more facades to hide them. So I think that should work pretty well. Just do something like this. We can bring this down. Actually, I don't even know if I have enough cables. Is five going to be enough? That might not be enough. <laughs> oh, well. I'll have to go make some more cables. But yeah, we will just run this stuff all the way over here. Oops. Let's get rid of that. And connect that up. So yeah, uh, all of our items from the skeleton spawner up here, we go directly into the ME network. And yeah, so let me get some more cables made up, get some facades made up, uh, and we will take a look at this a little bit closer. Okay guys, so everything's now hooked up. I have the ME transition plane in place and I have the ME cable running behind these redwood planks and they are covered by the facade, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, down here I made a little bit of a change. I moved the bioreactors back one block and we can kind of see all the ME cable exposed down here, which is pretty nice. We have good access to it. Uh, let me come down here and show you guys what this is looking like now. So yeah, these are just moved back one block just to make it look a little bit nicer. I mean, we're probably never even going to come down here ever again, but I just don't like everything being exactly super flat up against the wall. Uh, so down here for the bioreactors, we need to grab these ME Precision export buses. These are like what the old export buses were before in Ultimate, uh, but they've been renamed Precision, and they got some cool things. Uh, about them. So they, uh, unlike the basic export bus, 
you can set like what you want here. You can export multiple things. The basic export bus, you only have one spot available. And you don't have any of these redstone or stack mood options available. Uh, so each one of these we're going to have to change. And in fact, I need a piece of bone meal. Let me grab one of these bones. Uh, let's do this. Get this all hooked up. Okay, so down here on each one of these, like we've done before with the export buses, we have to set a pattern. And then we have to say, um, move single items slash craft. This will move any bone meal that's in the system. Uh, it'll export it. And if there's none left, it'll attempt to craft it. Well, right now we don't have anything set up to craft the bone meal. So, uh, this way I can go ahead and manually place a whole bunch of bone meal in there and they'll just go into each one of these things automatically which is pretty cool so that's one step closer to me not having to do anything else here to keep these things going let's go ahead and just do these last couple i think there's only two left maybe yep this is the last one Move single items craft excellent okay so those are all set up the only thing we got to do now is just hook up the cables and i thought i had a few more cables on me apparently i don't Let's do cable. Oh, I only got one in the system. Let's craft up ten more. Hopefully I got enough stuff in here where I can craft them. Six. Okay, so that should be more than enough. Okay, great. Oh yeah, let's get down here, get this connected. Alright, so now these should all be hooked up. Anytime there is any bone meal in the system, it should go directly into these bioreactors. Let's see if we can see this working real quick. Hopefully this is going to work. Let me grab a whole bunch of this stuff and convert all that into bone meal. Let's do it this way. Yeah, we will use pulverizers or macerators or a different way to get it more efficient, efficiently in a little bit. But let's go ahead and just go and drop all this stuff in here. Hopefully we will see the bone meal going to where it's supposed to be. Oh, did my jetpack just run out? Oh, no. Okay, well, yeah, these are now filling up the bioreactors with the the bone meal, and we can see the buffers going. So each one of these should now be, yep, they're all filling up. Excellent. Okay, so now all we need to do is supply, or figure out a way to supply our ME system with the bone meal all of the time, or get the patterns hooked up so we can create bone meal on the fly. Very, very cool. I love ME, or I love uh, Applied Energistics, the whole ME network. Very good stuff. Uh, let me get my jetpack charge real quick, and let's take a look at this ME transition plane. Okay, guys. So you might have noticed that I moved that transition plane to a different spot, and I'll show you why. So here's another one that I just crafted. Let's stick, stick it right next to this crafting terminal so it has power. You can see it's got like the little TV screen vertical thing going on or horizontal thing going on uh, so the reason why I moved that the way I did is because in order to get items to touch this we would have to put a conveyor belt running and directly in front of there well the thing is with this transition plane you can't have a block in front of it you put a block there and it automatically gets pulled away and put into the ME system so with this we can make ourselves a pretty cool cobblestone generator uh, completely, you know, like a vanilla one, but ME would import the cobblestone automatically. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you just place it right there and it, <laughs> and it pulls it right back into the system. Very good stuff. Okay, uh, so yeah, if we were to put like a conveyor belt or something running into it, I actually didn't try this yet, but I just assumed. Let's put a conveyor belt. I assume it's going to be pulled right into it. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. Okay, I was expecting this to be like a full block uh, well maybe I'll change it around a little bit but for right now uh, the way I have this set up is the items are just gonna fall right on top of that plane and as soon as they touch it uh, they go pull they get pulled right into the ME network uh, so let me go and grab this guy uh, these wireless access terminals you have to charge every time you pull items in and out of the network uh, it uses a bit of energy whereas in the ultimate pack you could freely do that as much as you wanted to yeah let me just go out here anyway Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, yeah, let's break that glass and go in here. Okay, so yeah, the conveyor belts are set up pretty much the same exact way. I need to put a piece of stone right there. But anyway, the, uh, the items go into these conveyor belts. They move forward, and then they land right there on that transition plane. And they should all go into 
the Emmy network as expected. Do I have... No, I don't. Stone brick I need. Can I work? <laughs> I can't use this around here. Dang it. Maybe a little bit closer I can use it. Um, here? Nope. Stone brick. Let's get that fixed up real quick while we got that opened up. Should just take a second. Get down in here. Whoa, whoa. Careful spikes. Oh, we need to place it right there. Ah. Okay, so that's all fixed. <laughs> nice. Okay, so I haven't tested this yet. I assume it's going to work. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work, uh, but you never know. So let's do this. Let's turn this guy on. And let's just see if we get bones going to our system here. Actually, I guess we could just come over here. We don't even have to be over there looking at that thing. We can just come here and look at bones. And 36,930, 36,932. 33, 35, yep, this is obviously working. Uh, we are getting bones in the network, which is really, really awesome. Okay, so that takes care of that problem. Uh, other things I didn't really consider yet. We're going to be filling up our network with junk that we don't want. Uh, we're going to be getting all of that armor. We're going to be getting bows. We're going to be getting a whole bunch of stuff. That's the next thing that I'm going to have to figure out. Now, I know that there is things like fuzzy export buses where it will take all that item regardless of the damage value. If it's a bow in the system, we can put it somewhere. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to look at that. Uh, so let me go ahead and turn this off, figure out what we're going to do, and I will be right back. Watch out, mobs. All right, guys, so I think I have a pretty good solution for what we're going to do here. Now, this is going to involve us deleting the items. Uh, we're going to delete the the gold armor, the chain armor, all that stuff. Uh, we don't really have a place for all those items to go right now. Uh, later on, we'll figure out a way how to you know fix them and automatically smelt them and other things like that. But for right now, I just want the skeleton farm going. And we don't have to worry about it clogging up our ME system. Okay, so I was looking in NEI, and I found this item here called a void chest. This is a delete items. Okay, so that requires eight obsidian and an ender pearl. Do we have an ender pearl? I don't even remember. Ender, we don't have an ender pearl. Okay, so we have iron, right? We have some iron blocks. Yeah, we got actually 40 loose iron. Okay, so let us make... Uh, some things using the minium stone. Alright, so we'll come in here and say we want to make some ender pearls. Well, we just need one ender pearl, really. Okay, and then we want... We're going to want to make some obsidian. So let's take the spruce wood. We need eight obsidian. Okay, good. Let's take this away. Put those. Okay, and then we will go ahead and craft that up. Void chest deletes items. Yeah, I've never made one of these before. I don't know if you can break them with a pickaxe or how these work. Let's check that out. Can just break it. Okay. And then we set it down and we put an item in here. Okay, those just go in and are deleted apparently. Very good. Okay, exactly what we want. So for something like this, we could just do a fuzzy storage bus. Uh, we need to turn that around. Where is my wrench? Okay, let's turn that around. All right. And then on this thing, we want to set a pattern. I don't know if we can set just a damaged one or if it has to be an undamaged one. I've never used one of these before. We will set this priority to. Okay, so if we stick, let's do a bow. I see that these aren't going in there yet. So if we put those in there. What happens? Doesn't look like anything's happening. I might have to use a fully charged up bow for this to work, or is it already gone? I can't click that out of there. Bow. Huh. Oh, I guess it's gone. Okay. So yeah, it looks like that does work. So we put all these guys in here. We click back bow. Yep, and now they're gone. Okay, so this is storing them in the void chest, and the void chest is just deleting them. 
So that seems like a pretty good way to get rid of that item. Uh, we will also need to do the same thing, like I said, for the gold armor, the chain armor, the iron armor, all that stuff for now. And then later on, we can figure out a way how to automatically smelt that in like the Tinker's Construct Smeltery or other things. Uh, maybe just fully, you know, repair them so they all stack. Uh, that could be another way we'll hold on to them. Uh, but for right now, I think that's pretty good solution. Obviously, I'll have to find a better spot for this. <laughs> kind of out here in the open isn't very good. Maybe we could stick it up here somewhere. I guess we could attach it and stick it in the corner. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. All right. So I think we've done enough with the applied energistic stuff today. Let's go down to the miscraft floor. Uh, I went ahead and I got rid of age two and three. I deleted those books. Just got rid of them. We don't need them anymore. Jet pack is fine. Uh, I did a little bit more miscraft exploration. Found some pages. But let's come here to our cave world. And let's go this way, actually. So I was flying around looking for some more of the Certus Quartz. And just kind of flying around, mining, and kept going this way. And then I found something kind of cool. An oil well. Well, what's so cool about that? Uh, maybe it wasn't that one. Maybe it was this one right here. <laughs> yeah, it's an oil well. Or an oil deposit and it's just kind of like formed down the middle of the water which is pretty cool I thought that was really awesome you see this entire thing would have been oil or I guess the oil reserve if this was land all around uh, but then I would decide to fly up to the top of this thing let's go all the way up here pretty high up but yeah you can get out of the cave world which I thought was pretty awesome and check it out we have mushrooms up here so yeah, now we have pretty much unlimited supply of food. Um, we could get the mushroom stew off these guys, bring them back to the overworld. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, this world also has a star fissure in it somewhere. Let's see if I can find that. Oh no, you know what? We're pretty far away from the entrance. I think it was over here. Uh, but yeah, we can still find the libraries on the surface. So this is pretty awesome too. This entire cave world is completely flat. Obviously, we got the mushrooms on on the world, but other than that, I mean, this would be perfect to run around in, find the libraries. Uh, you can find the Thomcraft dungeons, the uh, the Wisp dungeons on the surface. So that's pretty cool. Um, find the libraries. We have all the food we would ever need. The only thing uh, is that sun is actually moving, even though I told it to be a zero length. Uh, moon or a zero length sun it is still moving yeah here's the star fissure all the way down there uh. yep and this is the entrance to our place so yeah very very awesome uh so i thought that oil well is pretty cool and the fact that it's completely flat on the surface and we got all those mushrooms up there very very cool all right guys well i think that's gonna do for today uh, we got a lot of stuff done. I still got a little bit more work on the applied energistics to get that all hooked up. Uh, but I think we got a good solution right now to get rid of all those extra bows. Uh, like I said, we're going to have to find a way to store the armor and fix all of that. For now, I think we're just going to delete it so it's not taking up our space. I'm going to make a few more discs, uh, get some extra space going, and then probably next episode, we will look at making a Miscraft Age specifically for quarrying. And yeah... Oh, yeah, also down here, this water, it's just a couple blocks thick. <laughs> Very weird. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.